A few weeks ago, we started a project for a battery analyzer, right? There's a lot of interest in um, purchasing or acquiring the device like that. And there is something that I didn't understand back then that you guys corrected me on. Because I said the, the batteries are cheap and available. And to the extent that is true, however, it's very important to realize that the replacement batteries are uh, inferior quality. And I actually realized that after you guys mentioned that, I realized that whenever back in the day I would uh, replace a battery on, uh, say, iPhone 5 or 6, those were the ones that allowed you to, to just replace the battery, no pairing or anything. The battery would uh, essentially bulge up and explode the phone after just a few weeks of, uh, of working, while original batteries never did that. So I think quality of the cells is, is, a very, is significantly inferior to the original ones. That's why we want battery analyzers and unlockers so we can save the original battery. And even if it uh, has a little degraded cells and stuff like that, it'll still supposedly work better than the replacement Chinese battery. The fake, essentially, battery or illegitimate battery. They might work, sure, but uh, the cells will likely be um, significantly inferior. Since then, uh, I'll show you a little bit of uh, update of uh, what we've done so far. But uh, a few days ago, or was it like a week ago, uh, Tony posted uh, the community post uh, that there is a, I think, Russian guy that wrote a software that is already done, already working, and he presented it. It supports uh, multiple chips and allows you to unlock the battery. It also allows you to, to check for stuff, uh, right? To basically diagnose the, the battery. So in light of that, uh, we figured that, hey, if his, got, if his uh, application works as advertised, it's not expensive and the updates are relatively cheap, then there's really no need for our device. However, today in the morning, uh, Tony woke up to an email from the, the guy uh, that uh, he was wasting his time. He actually, which I didn't know, he uh, actually even wanted to donate $500 into the development of the application. In my view, very generous. No one offered to do that for, for our project here. <laughs> not that I'm asking for donations, not at all. So the guy is at, at least rude. <laughs> Now, Tony mentioned something that it has to do with the um, uh, fact that the, the, the Russia is an adversary. And I don't know, I kind of understand that uh, because I was thinking if I get my hands on that application, I would have no problem reverse engineering it. And if I did, obviously I wouldn't sell it if I just stole it from, uh, if I just stole his intellectual property but I would have no problems uh, releasing it as um, open source or free application. I would, I would have no problems with that because I'm Polish. He's Russian. We're enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so in light of this, um, I guess the project continues. So let me show you a little bit of uh, updates, uh, what we have so far and what I'm planning to do. So number one, uh, I started working on it with a Uno board. It's a decent choice. You really don't need anything more than that because we just want to initiate an I2C connection to the battery and just exchange the data with the computer. Simple as that. And either unlocking logic is on the, on the device or the unlocking logic is in the, the application. It really doesn't matter. It's easier when it's on the application because it's easier to update than uh, updating firmware. As far as the software goes, uh, we have a, our um, host machine a, a communication protocol that uh, it, it was kind of a quick design. Uh, there's nothing really, um, nothing to write home about over here. 
Um, it uses a ASCII-based protocol, but as you can see, we're using bytes, not ASCII text, right? And uh, this is kind of inspired by the PC410 controller. That's uh, kind of how the PC410 controller works. But essentially, you know, the, uh, the, the host machine class is just essentially allows you to uh, receive messages, send messages, um, and that, that's pretty much it. It just exchanges data between the host machine and the, and the device. Uh, so the device is uh, controlled by the host machine um, explicitly. Now, since then, I had a change of heart um, because the rework TC that we have over here, right? It uses a ASCII uh, text based protocol right so everything is readable obviously if you if you read the contents of the flash or stuff like that you have to send the actual bytes they're they're not gonna encode to characters but that's fine uh, just because you know we're sending uh, characters over here it doesn't mean that we cannot send uh, actual bytes every one of those characters is uh, is one byte so it's just the issue of uh, readability of it so when the host machine receives that um, receives that data, it just has to treat it as as bytes, not as uh, text, because otherwise it's it's um, it's not going to work. Now the host machine uh, uh, application is, as you can see, written in a way that it can run on Linux, Mac, Windows, what have you. And that is uh, lately very important to me because uh, Windows um, becomes less and less usable. Uh, this machine behind me, the big one, I literally built it a few months ago. Uh, I invested quite a few hundreds of dollars in it and I bought it along with Windows 11. That's the system that is installed over there. But I did not check what the TPM version on it was. So it turns out the TPM version was 1.2 or whatever, basically not 2.0. So as soon as the system updated, it no longer updates by itself. So you have to go to the advanced and, and click on every single update you want to you wanna download. You have to click on it manually because, of course, there's no button to update them all. And you have to maintain certain uh, order of installing those updates. You can just be random about it or you can... Um, randomly click on them and they just won't work so you just click different ones until the other ones work it's crazy so now every time I would like to connect some kind of device to that computer right for the driver to be found I have to go to advanced and I have to go through the huge list of updates and and click all of them individually it, it's like a big middle finger to the, the Windows users my fulfillment machine, that little laptop over here, this one, that's what fulfills the orders, right? So it, it, in, in some cases it auto fulfills, in other cases it just sends you the address. When you order an ECM repair, it sends you the address. Pretty important for me because uh, then if you don't have the address, then, you know, how are you going to send the device? Again, it will force an update in the middle of the night meaning it'll just terminate my application. God knows what happens when you terminate it like that without my consent, without my permission, possibly causing issues. Then it'll obviously, it gets stuck at 88%. I don't know why, I don't care, but every time it updates, it gets stuck for on 88% forever. I even waited 48 hours at, at, on one occasion. It won't go past 88%, so it won't update. I don't know why. It does have TPM 2.0. But even if it passes, then it restarts the computer and, well, it's not going to run your application. I'm sure, you could put it in auto start, but there's also a tick box that I have to tick to enable the actual worker to uh, start processing uh, incoming orders. So I have to also authenticate. It's not going to authenticate by itself. So essentially, Windows is no longer a viable option for me to develop my, my tools for. 
So from now on, every application that I write is a window is a Windows compatible, obviously. You can still use it on Windows, but it's got to run on Mac and Linux. That's the requirement nowadays. So the application is, is very simple. You just you just select in this case Comport. It can be TTY uh, on you know Linux or what have you. Uh, connect. If the device is detected, if the battery is detected, you'll see some stuff already over here, and then you can just run a quick diagnostic or or um, full diagnostics, um, that kind of stuff. But what I want to do is I want to change the protocol which will allow me to to work on it in two stages. So I want the protocol to work the same as the rework TC does. So completely ASCII text based so you can connect to it via terminal and, and just send commands. And that's what I want. Just scan to find the find the battery, connect to the battery, you know, start charging, stop charging. I check the status, I get a particular uh, information you need, like voltage, number of cells, uh, degradation, the, the number of cycles, all that kind of stuff, the internal resistance, anything that you can get from the battery, get it, and then, you know, detect the chip. What, what kind of chip can it be? We have a simple code that uh, perhaps will detect uh, which chip it is. So here we have the registers that we write to uh, for any particular information that we want to request. And we have the detect controller uh, method over here. If we check the implementation, right? We just kind of make certain assumptions, right? So if, if, if it's uh, Texas Instruments BQ20 chip, right? The manufacturer access should be on um, at this register. Right, and if we get the valid response, we assume that this is a 20 series TI uh, BQ chip, right? If it's on the second register, it's likely a BQ40 chip and stuff like that. But as you can see, it only accounts for like essentially three kinds of chips. Uh, so it's in its infancy at, uh, at this point. The solution of the Russian guy was to just for you to know which uh, chip it is so he had the tabs in the application for uh, the chip so so essentially you have to know which chip you have now in all fairness you can do the uh, incision in the but in the actual battery case and just see which chip is installed on the battery sure you could uh, in in some cases probably you can just google uh, the the battery the the type, battery type that you have the battery model and uh, you can find out which uh, which BQ chip or which chip in general um, is on the battery. But I would like it to uh, for the application to actually be able to detect which chip it is. So essentially, we have a lot of code. We have a lot of pieces kind of floating, but nothing actually working. So now we just need to kind of put it back together. And, and start actually testing it, right? But here's the problem. A lot of people uh, said that they would send a battery for testing, right, as a, as a donation, either working batteries, not working batteries, locked, unlocked, doesn't matter, uh, degraded cells or what have you. Uh, but I haven't received any of them so far. And I suspect that this is one of those one of those problems. That's why we need this uh, device is because shipping batteries could be um, difficult. Some uh, carriers might uh, completely not take it, especially if you describe it as a faulty lithium battery. They might reject it. Even when you um, when you board the plane um, the transatlantic uh, flight and you have a laptop, uh, you have to fill out some, some paperwork and they, they do ask you some questions uh, regarding, regarding that because te technically you're bringing a, a lithium battery on board. There's gonna be pressure changes, changes um, if, it's, if it's in the uh, cargo hold, uh, there's, there's no um, heating over there uh, or not not that much it's it's the same same pressure i i was um 
I was wrong about uh, you know saying that the 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 cabin is pressurized, but the luggage uh, compartment is not. But that would not be possible because it's the same structure, right? But your cabin is heated, and and the the baggage compartment is not, or at least not to the comfortable level. So essentially, it is exposed to some uh, ex some elements like um, temperature, like obviously shaking and and stuff like that. Have you seen how they load those into the plane and then unload uh, unload them? So I understand that I might not be able to receive um, donated batteries. Uh, which means I'm gonna have to just kind of look for, I'll see maybe some old laptops, maybe some old batteries, maybe someone sells wholesale of um, faulty, faulty batteries. Because without that, I, can, uh, I can't really get this off the ground. As you can see, I wrote a lot of code, but this is just the code, you know, written based on my assumptions. None of that has been physically tested. So that is kind of blocking me at the moment. But uh, as soon as I'm done with rework DC, because there's still a few few quirks I have to figure out. Uh, and as soon as I release uh, rework pro 118, uh, I'm back. I'm back on this project. It officially has been moved from the back burner back to the front burner. <laughs> and, and we're going to do the full development. Now, I added a few people to the project. Uh, I haven't seen any commits or anything like that, which is fine. There is there's no pressure. Uh, you know, if you want to contribute some uh, some coding or uh, gathering some, you know, like um, data sheets for BQ chips or uh, any, any kind of um, documentation or anything like that, Definitely, you know, just open a pull request, or if you if you can or don't want to, just just uh, send it to my email. I received quite a few emails from uh, from people with all kinds of stuff that they had. You know, essentially, hey, here's my two gigabyte folder of all the stuff that I collected in this um, in, on this subject uh, over you know over the years or when I was working on it. And here it is. You know, see what you can do with that. That's uh, that is very valuable. So the bottom line is, if you were wondering whether we're still working on the project, there was a small pause, but it looks like we are still on the project. So stay tuned. Uh, perhaps the project will be either open source, free, or if it's paid, um, we'll see. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to figure out unlocking for all the batteries, but there's definitely going to be some unlocking for some batteries. But there's definitely going to be a diagnostic, um, so we'll be able to diagnose the, the battery. And what I really want to do is add a uh, discharge, charge and discharge feature uh, so you can, you can actually test the battery. So with that, wish us luck. And um, if you want to participate in the project, yes, I do have a long list of um, people who want to beta test it. Uh, it definitely, I'll, uh, as soon as we have something actually working, uh, you guys will be the first ones to, to receive the link to the application and the firmware. You're going to have to upload it to the device that I will uh, describe. I'll give you a link where to get the device, how to connect it, and all of that. It will likely be ESP32, not Uno, but we'll see. It'll definitely work with both. It'll just have different uh, capabilities. Thank you guys very much for your attention to this matter, and I shall see you in the next one. <laughs>